Scammers exposed on hardcore pawn. Les? Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm attorney Kyle Dupuis. My client brought in a $10,000 ring here, and she wants to either collect the remaining money owed to her. Let me explain right to you. This is a counterfeit ticket. This is what our receipts actually look like. Our tickets do not have this many numbers. This is the amount of numbers that we have. Two angry customers came into the pawn shop with an attorney claiming that Les prevented them from retrieving their earrings. However, their receipt was a fake. This is a counterfeit ticket. Period. End of story. I don't know how I got mixed up or printing wrong or whatever. Bullshit. That's bullshit. The numbers don't match up. The paper stack doesn't match up. Les was able to prove that this ticket was a counterfeit. Instead of taking responsibility, the two angry customers directed their anger at the attorney. Brought in a fraudulent ticket. I didn't bring no fraudulent ticket. I don't believe that the store gave you this ticket. Nah, no, well, I don't ticket. believe you a real attorney. You, you him, security. Excuse me. Have a nice day. What? Dumb and dumber. Two teenagers were attempting to scam the shop by pawning their laptops and then trying to find a loophole to get their laptops back. Seth would then confront these scammers. Yeah, guys, every uh, transaction we did today is still accounted for, so... Anyway, I can just switch the name. No, I know, because they're in her name. I didn't, you were planning a scam against me. I didn't, I didn't know about the scam yeah, until... Did. This dude literally accidentally admitted to trying to scam the shop. This would get the attention of Les, who confronted these two scammers. So you were trying to hustle us, and then you were the one that ended up getting hustled. When you say that you're honest, tell us the truth. Credit must be given to Les for remaining so composed and calm to these teens. These teens sure did learn a lesson. One of the teens lost it. Ooh, boy. I'm glad you were right this time. I still don't trust anybody. The betrayal. Two detectives enter the shop after Les got betrayed by his head security of three years, Joe. Les wanted to show detectives the video proof of Joe stealing thousands of dollars of jewelry from the shop. The detectives have arrived. I need to tell them what's been happening. Just keep your eyes on the front door. We have to keep him occupied so he'll stay in the store until we're ready to have his ass arrested. We show them the security footage of Joe walking over to Jeff's desk and stealing jewelry. Joe was caught red-handed stealing and Les was getting ready to get him arrested. After the detectives got all the evidence they needed, Les called in Joe to arrest him. Hey, Joe. Joe, did you steal from me? Tell me the truth. He said, yes, I did. This was the ultimate betrayal, since Les was under the impression that they developed a genuine connection. It was revealed that Joe stole over $7,000 worth of jewelry from the store. The police would then arrest him. You go this way. Busting stealing. Get a whole pocket full of ours. The truck scammer. This so-called businessman enters the shop and offers Les his lot patrol service that would supposedly earn the shop an extra $1,000 a month. But Les knew from the start that it was too good to be true. Is this the guy you were talking about earlier? Are you kidding me? No, you're not going to take my car. This is private property right here. What are you doing? Mr. Gold, tell me what you're doing. I start off on the wrong foot. I'm taking this cars right here. What she gives you the right? This scammer towed customers' cars that were parked outside the shop despite having no authority to do so. He would then attempt to explain his business model to Les, and it was not good. Uh, your lot patrolled. I would take three or four cars a day. Uh -huh. Fifty dollars a car for you. Do you charge? We charge three twenty-five a car. And once it gets back $325? to the lot, three hundred and twenty-five dollars. This is about business and keeping your lot clean. And this could be a thousand dollars cash for you in your pocket. I mean, the scammer was making Les some big promises, and Les questioned whether it was even legal or not. This guy was extremely shady, and karma would slap him across the face. Try what to is do this? backdoor. That's what happens. What is this? Never come back to my store again. Don't ever try to shake me down. How much does he owe you? $1,000. No, that's that's thousand bucks. Fake earrings. These two customers enter the store looking to pawn some earrings. All of a sudden, these two started giving Les a serious attitude. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. How my mother jewelry? That's not your business why I'm coming in here to do what I got to do. Jewelry, loan me my money. Man, you getting on my nerves, dog. Les attempted to be polite to these two women, but they started being extremely disrespectful. When Les told them that their earrings were fake, they lost it. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, they're yes, not. Yes, the they are. That's how you treat your customers when they come in here? Money. 
the laptop stealer. What seems like a normal day at the shop quickly takes a horrible turn once Les notices that the laptop room door was left wide open. Les knew that something was severely wrong. Rod, this door is open. There's a screwdriver laying next to it. And I see this screwdriver next to the laptop room. Door is wide open. Explain that to me. You know what? I caught Justin just the other day breaking into the laptop room. It turns out that one of the managers saw Justin break into the computer room to steal some of the expensive computers. This made Les furious, and he called for an urgent staff meeting. Randy, as running this back, tell me what the f is going on with this door. When we needed to get in that room, I didn't have the keys. You have permission to go in there no matter how you get in there, you have permission. Am I correct? Do you? What gave you the right to break into a locked room? Les confronted Justin and was just disappointed in him since the staff should never be stealing items from the customers. Justin would come up with a plethora of excuses before Les fired him. You broke my trust, and because of that, Justin, you're fired. I Can't have people that you don't trust working for you in this business. The Scamming Whale This delusional whale waddles her way to the shop attempting to pawn fake Gucci. Even though it was fake, Ashley still gave her an offer, but she wasn't very happy about the offer. Trying to get a loan on it, or you guys can buy it. It's 50 bucks. Why is it $50? You can tell it's actually stained. Okay. All through here. Yeah, I wasn't interested in more than 50. If you know purses, then you know this is cost way more than it. When the customer got this reality check, she started to get disrespectful and made insults towards Ashley's appearance, even though she ain't no model, nor is she remotely good looking. Can I talk to somebody else? I don't want to talk to your pepperine looking ass. Did she take a look at her own ass? Can I get somebody else to talk to? Ugly ass bitch. How you get here? You <laughs> your way to the top. The golf club scammer. The following customer enters the pawn shop where he wanted to get $150 for some Spalding golf clubs. However, the shop did not take this and the customer got furious. I'm like, he won't take these golf clubs because they spoil Spalling, my oh, bad. Spalling. Spalling. My bad. Right, right. How much did you want for him? At least 150. Uh -huh. I can go 10 bucks. $10 for all these clubs? All of them. Dad. This customer clearly did not know anything about golf clubs. He demanded to speak to a manager, but he had no clue that Les was above a manager. This customer would learn the hard way. You're not gonna play me like no crackhead. Follow me. Don't touch my golf clubs. You're gonna give me my money. I ain't going nowhere until I get my money. Now it's time to leave. For what? Because I said so. This customer refused to leave the shop and kept on shouting insults at Les. The guard then took care of him accordingly. Give me my money. F that. I'll go. Okay. Don't put your hands on me. What you walk behind me for, cuz? He didn't know anything about golf clubs. Mr. Bugatti. The following customer comes in normally and looks to purchase a watch. For once on the show, a customer enters the pawn shop with positive energy. Ooh -wee. That is sharp. Can I try it on? Look at this watch! Woo-wee! For like, like a watch like 500 or something. Yeah. A Bugatti. Sadly, this positive energy would not last very long. The customer wanted to purchase a nice $599 watch, but when it came time to pay, he made himself look like a fool with what he did next. $5.99. $5.99 plus tax? I got you. Now, before you say something, now, I'm going to be honest with you. This right here, it's worth a lot of money. It's worth, look, look at it, two and add three more zeros. This customer was hilarious and described himself as Bugatti. He would then make the claim that this $2 bill was worth over $2,000. He would then get angry at Ashley. This is worth more than that around your neck, you chunky draws looking. Y'all ain't got no money. Okay. No Have a good day. Mr. Fake Rolex. The following customer enters the pawn shop demanding a refund for this watch he supposedly purchased from the store. However, he didn't have a receipt, and it was clear he was just a scammer. Not good. I got a little issue here. Bought this watch from you guys a couple days ago, and it's not working. Do you have your receipt? I do not. Why? Where'd it go? I spent a lot of money on that thing, man. This customer didn't even make a good effort to hide the fact that it was a scam, as he didn't have any receipt and started being disrespectful. Ashley would then expose this scammer. What does it say? This is bull. You guys must have ripped me off something. This guy was full of he could blow up at any second. The watch didn't even have a Rolex logo on it and was a total fake. The customer kept on being disrespectful to the staff until he would get humbled by security. How about I work your face? Really? How about it? Really? 
I don't play when it comes to safety. Get out. The Laptop Burglar. A massive altercation occurs in the pawn shop between two women. It turns out that the customer was attempting to sell a stolen laptop, and the owner of this laptop found out about this. What the hell? You mean to tell me you don't stole my damn laptop? Oh, God. God. You give me my up. Take my laptop. Oh, well. This entire altercation came out of nowhere and got the attention of Les. Les would then ask the customer about this heated altercation. What happened? First of all, this bitch owed me so much motherfucking money. Nah, and I'm thinking he's still. He didn't got my f You know what? We ain't even friends, no mother. This fight would make its way outside where the chaos would continue. The two women took it too far, and Les took matters into his own hands and broke up this altercation. Okay, okay. All right, that's enough. That's enough. But I got my laptop. That's all that matters. All right. Go ahead, uh -huh. man. The thrower. The following customer makes his way to the pawn shop looking to get an unrealistic amount of money for extremely old technology. When he didn't get his way, he got extremely disrespectful. I'm just looking for a couple of dollars, you know what I'm saying? We're not interested. Let me speak to somebody else back there. Lame ass. No. Yeah, I'm not interested. For real? For real. When reality hit this customer, he started to throw things all over the store. This disrespect caught the attention of Les, who did not hesitate to confront the seller for causing this disturbance. On that, on that bum ass, listen, mother, don't be ever throwing no at me. You understand right, that? John, John, you understand John, John, that, man? John, John, if we don't, then he come back in here. Oh, it's like, it's like that. I don't know. This customer got thrown out of the shop, but even when he got kicked out, he still tried to make his way back into the shop while shouting insults at Les. Even reach behind nowhere. Reach away. I if I got it. Got it. And what you gonna do? Look in the dumpster, it'll be there tonight. Yo, ain't Mr. Antique. The following delusional customer marches his way to the pawn shop looking to get serious money for a necklace that has no value. He did everything in his power to convince Les that it was some sort of antique. I'm trying to get a nice deal on my antique necklace. It's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. My grandfather gave it to me. This customer tried so hard to pass this off as an antique. Les knew that this was just a waste of time, and he told the customer that the necklace was worth nothing, which made him extremely mad. Why can't I get something for it, then? Because we don't take crystal. Uh, how much would you pawn this for? I won't take that in pawn, because we only take precious metal. Because it's an antique. Didn't you hear that part? So let's work something out, man. No, I can't take it. I'm sorry. The customer was delusional and kept on begging Les to make him an offer. Eventually, security would humble this customer. It's antique, man. Nope, it's not antique, bro. I don't want to talk. No deal. Deal. No deal. I can leave on my own. Hey, 